next presentation is entitled The Crisis in the Church and Its Solution, A Defense of Bishops in the Church. Please welcome Demo Majayas. Brothers and sisters in Christ, it seems like not a day goes by without the foundation that our church has known for centuries coming under attack. We see that holiness, holiness in the church is fading, fighting against the crashing waves of sin. The church is not behaving as the true church ought to be, and all of us Christians know it. Whether it be a multitude of priests and pastors sexually abusing children, or pastors, instead of wearing the robes of sacred tradition, now wearing the pride flags around their body and adorning their churches in them, the church is not as it ought to be. While the church has always been full of sinners and chaos, how are we to solve this current crisis that we are in? Well, many look towards church hierarchy as the answer. Specifically, many look towards the idea where there is a central authority, a bishop, who governs over all the churches and parishes in a particular area, caring for both their spiritual and material needs. On the other side of this argument, however, there are those who reject church hierarchy, looking at the history of corruption and heretical teachings that have engaged the church hierarchy throughout the centuries. Now, there can be no doubt whatsoever that the church hierarchy has done some pretty terrible things throughout the history throughout its history. There can also be no denying that many non-denominational and evangelical churches have seen spiritual and material success on their own. However, I argue that church hierarchy is the true biblical way to break free from this crisis in which we are in and usher in a new age of both spiritual and material prosperity to the church. So, is church hierarchy established in the Bible? Yes. In fact, church hierarchy was established by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ himself. We see that after his glorious resurrection, Jesus commissioned his disciples and eventually the Apostle Paul to go and make disciples of all nations and to appoint elders, people to be commanded. There are many examples of where we can see this, but one specific example is St. Paul's letter to St. Titus. St. Titus was appointed by St. Paul to be the priest in Crete, to be the head bishop in Crete. And we hear St. Paul tell St. Titus this, This is why I left you in Crete, that you might put what was remaining into order, into order and appoint elders in every city and town in the land. What we see here is that St. Titus was giving, St. Paul was giving St. Titus the ability to appoint elders who would care for the churches and answer to him. And then St. Titus would answer to St. Paul, who received his authority directly from God above. The early church and those that followed the apostles understood this well. St. Ignatius of Antioch, an apostolic father and theologian, who was a direct disciple of the apostles Peter and John, who walked with Jesus Christ himself, said this, let no one do anything in the church without the bishop. Simply put, there is not a single thing to do in the church. There is not a single thing in church life that is to be done without the bishop's approval and guidance. The fullness of the life of the church cannot be realized without the bishop. And we have seen that the early church has taken heed of this well and has followed this example. Think of the rise of heresy, specifically the heretic Arius. Arius gained notoriety and fame by preaching that Jesus Christ himself was not fully divine and disconnected the nature and disconnected the two persons and the two natures of God. He denied that our own Lord and Savior was God himself. Now, while some might acknowledge that there was some merit to this, ultimately this did not line up with scripture and theological doctrine. So we saw that the church hierarchy, after giving Arius the chance to repent, assembled at the Council of Nicaea. Here, they condemned Arius as a heretic, excommunicated him from the church, and ushered in the Nicene Creed, which is a basic documentation of all of the beliefs that Christians hold in all major Christian denominations, even to this day. We can also see that heresy is not the only area where church hierarchy can assert itself in and help, but also with theological disputes. Right after Jesus Christ ascended into heaven, we saw confusion among the apostles of whether Christians should keep the old Jewish tradition or if they should move on. 
While this is a certainly complicated question to hold, even the disciples themselves were confused and had disagreements. However, when the church hierarchy assembled at the Council of Jerusalem, we saw them put this to rest, coming to the conclusion that while the Jewish law had its place, we are not to follow it word for word. This was an action and a benefit of church hierarchy. And as theologian and academic dean, Father John P. Cush states, there is many more opportunities and experiences throughout the church history, too many of which we can name, from the early church to the medieval era to even today, where church hierarchy has effectively helped out with theological disputes. Now, we can also see the church hierarchy playing an important role in the church materially as well. Look at the, when, in a day when many churches struggle to grow and financially sustain themselves, we have seen the church hierarchy come in and help these churches stand on their own two feet. Think of the Diocese of London and the Anglican Church, for example. There is no doubt that the Anglican Church today is full of problems and perhaps does not resemble what it once was hundreds of years ago. But we do see that the Diocese of London has helped their churches operate over 150 church schools, help in ministerial activities, in prisons, police departments, hospitals, and other schools, and has helped the Anglican Church raise over one million pounds for charity each year. Many believe the church would not be in the position it is in without church hierarchy. Now, those who oppose church hierarchy would look to those like Martin Luther as a proper refutation. This makes sense. Martin Luther was 100% noble in his efforts to fight against the corruption and heretical teachings that the Catholic Church was engaging in at this time. And even today, the Roman Catholic Church looks back on this era with shame and rejects it. Specifically now though, people would point towards Martin Luther's teaching of the universal priesthood of all believers, which states, as defined by reformed theologian J.V. Fesco, that there is no longer a priestly class of people within God's kingdom but that we are all priests by virtue of our union with Christ and our direct access to God as the head of the church. Simply put, we are all now priests since Christ has come, thus abolishing the need for church hierarchy, and we all together as priests make up the body of Christ. This could make sense, but we saw that Martin Luther himself eventually came to reject this very idea. Martin Luther stated in a letter to the Christian nobility later in his life, that we must come to terms with the fact that there is a Christian, there are priests and bishops in the Christian community and that they are worthy of our respect, honor, and our obedience to their authority. So while it is true that Martin Luther was skeptical of church hierarchy and perhaps wanted less of it than someone like me would say, it is an outright lie to claim that Martin Luther rejected the doctrine of hierarchy completely as he saw them necessary for spiritual guidance and leadership. Perhaps you are convinced, or perhaps, perhaps you are not convinced, or perhaps you are considering this new point of view. There can be no doubt that we will not be able to answer all of our theological questions and disputes that we have in this life. But what I do know is this, the church is suffering and we are in deep trouble. But God's grace is bigger than any crisis or scandal that arises or any problem, spiritual or material, that comes our way. Since the time of the apostles, Jesus Christ, God has given us the church hierarchy so that we may conquer these problems head on. I ask you all to at least consider this holy point of thinking so that the next generation of Christians might know the fullness of the life of the church. Thank you. Thank you.